Hi, everybody. Rebecca Nelson back with you once again for a fa another fabulous virtual tasting here with Becker Vineyards. Uh, tonight, we are trying our 2012 mm -hmm. Cabernet Sauvignon from the uh, Canada Family Vineyard. So all week, we've been doing these library wines from the Canada Vineyard. Uh, hopefully, you've gotten to try them. Um, maybe some of you have, have wisely saved a little bit from each time. So we do have a couple people joining us that have multiple vintages to try through, but we're going to be focusing on that 2012. So I hope you've got that in your glass and that you've given it some time to breathe. Um, we've got a lot to get through tonight. We've got not only our winemaker, John Leahy with us, we also have both Dr. Richard Becker and Dr. Joe Becker with us. And we also have with us the Canada family from the Canada Family Vineyard to discuss their vineyard and their wines and, and what the process is like working with Becker Vineyards. So we have a lot of interesting things to get talking about tonight. I real quick wanna remind everybody to share our stream uh, on your Facebook page so that we get as much exposure as possible. And we do really appreciate everybody joining in with us every single week. It means, the, it means the world to all of us. I hope you enjoy the wine. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rebecca. Thanks for that intro. Um, so a, as I promised, I have all three of those wines open tonight. It's uh, just going to take me a while to figure out how to sip it. But uh, until then, uh, doc, doctor, the doctors Becker are with us. Um, so Doc, would you like to lead us off with a few words this evening? Yeah, just, just a... Uh, uh, a tribute to all the people fighting this terrible pandemic. And uh, it's really uh, now having a, a second uh, 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 crest in Texas, very worried about it. I greatly uh, support the governor's idea that now is the time to, to stay at home, uh, wear masks, avoid, avoid crowds. Uh, I'm worried about running out of hospital beds in Texas. Anyway, that, that's one. So the, the way we're looking at this is that we're going to have our seven o'clock out on the fire escape, uh, New York, uh, in Texas, uh, in which we try to try to think about wider wider things like tasting wine. And I, I can't tell you how how proud I am of, of the wines from the, uh, the Canada Vineyard. I just, I just think they're fabulous. And uh, we have three open tonight, and uh, Joe and I, and uh, we look forward to what people think. Thank you for that intro. Um, and I want to start off by welcoming back uh, both Brenda and Daniel Canada back to the broadcast. How's everything in West Texas, guys? It's dry. extra <laughs> <laughs> rain, please send it this way. <laughs> I have some dehydrated water out in the garage if you need some. <laughs> we'll take, we'll any, take it. anything with moisture in it. <laughs> right. Well, listen, uh, we're very excited. And I, honestly, I think we put this together just as an excuse to have you guys back on with us. But one thing, um, you know, do you guys have a glass of wine? Did you? Yes, oh, yes we, we do. The, oh, perfect. 2012 and the 2015. Fantastic. Well, listen, I want to have everybody lift their glass, the 2012, get a, give it a swirl, a sniff and a taste, and we'll get this, uh, we'll get this virtual tasting going. Oh man. So, so this, this was the first vintage that I made from your, your vineyard, um, guys, um, Brenda and specifically, um, I still remember that lunch that we had right uh, at the middle yeah. of, um, the growing season we went in and, uh, my, the thing that struck me the most was one, I such a welcoming attitude for a complete stranger dressed like a weirdo and you let him in your house. Um, <laughs> two, realized that everybody in West Texas is now well armed because of that. Uh, <laughs> but more importantly, um, how many cats you guys have in your front yard? So <laughs> I think you guys- That keeps the snakes away. Right, but I would drive, drive up there and it's like, what? Wait a minute, I thought, it, oh, they're cat people. They are definitely cat people. <laughs> Are your cats doing well, I hope? <laughs> oh, geez. yeah, right. So, Daniel, um, I, I actually did not meet you that first year. I was, I think, <laughs> in the harvest um, or that winter. But you want to give us a little insight as the next generation of grower, what are you looking forward to in the vineyard? Uh, I'm looking forward to more, um, well, I have, I'm a perfectionist, so I want the quality of our, our grapes that we send you to be the mm -hmm. best they can be, because ultimately I want to compete 
with France and California. Not that we don't now, but I want to beat them. Well, I, uh, bad. I mean, that's I, just, I think we're well on our way. <laughs> so that's not a problem. John, John, your experience with the Canada's that, um, including uh, Brenda's vineyard manager is that they're not uh, they're not perfectionists at all right no no not not in the least um, <laughs> you know, the, my, my experience was that Brenda's so so hands-off that when a bad weather storm was coming up uh, and she was very concerned about it it dissipated right on radar and went around <laughs> and came back so ever since then I've been very polite to her and behind her back I call her mother nature so, <laughs> but with a ma'am after that I want you to know <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, I want to get into this 12, but let me take a break real quick because um, like all, all great things, we have a special anniversary tonight with uh, one of our followers of the, the Drynans. They're celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary uh, oh today. So I, everybody lift your glass yes. and let's toast to a w wonderful and, and long, happy relationship. Now, <laughs> congratulations for the 60. Um, I hope it lasts another 60, or maybe you don't, I don't know, <laughs> but <laughs> it, I, I think it's fantastic, and um, it it, I'm kind of a sucker for, for romantic things like that, so I, I wanted to make mention of it. I want to get back to the wine, though, and I want to get everybody's impressions, so I want to start with um, Joe and Doc, and then we're going to circle around back to you, Brenda, and, and um, Daniel, to, to get your impressions of the 2012, and then I want to kind of recap for everybody on the the other two lines. So, Doc, what what's your impression of the twelve? No, you start. <laughs> <laughs> you know, John, um, <clears throat> I love. I I know that you put just a. Uh, well, first off, I I Mrs. Canada's wines always just um, just develop so incredibly well in the bottle, and it's uh, it, it's fun to you know, and, and it's. Yeah, they, 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 it's more subtle. I feel like there, I, I know that there's a, there's a hint of Cab Franc in here and I just, I feel like it's, it's smooth and it's rich and it's just gotten so much better. And at some point I'd like to hear, cause this was the first, as you say, this was the first um, Cabernet from Miss Canada's vineyard that you'd made. I'd, I'd love to hear your impressions as someone coming from California. Is this, was this unexpected coming from California or um, what's your experience was like with that? Well, um, the, it's a good way to deflect the question, Joe. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I think maybe you could have been a lawyer in addition to being a doctor. <laughs> That's what his mother said. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, well, it, no, yes and no. It was not unexpected. Um, you guys sent me several samples of wines uh, when I was still in St. Helena, and I matched them up uh, like varietals with like body and structure to wines from, from the Napa Valley. Um, and then I, we, I went through that uh, exercise before I came out for the interview. And coming out there, uh, after I got hired for the job, the first week, uh, pretty much on the job, Brett and I took a week long tour almost, it was like four or five days tour of the High Plains and, and of course our, our vineyard holdings outside of Gillespie County as well. And, uh, one of the things that I noticed right away, uh, the Canada's vineyard was almost picture perfect as far as tightness on the irrigation, um, the pruning, the, the separation, the canopy overlay. Uh, it was just incredible. And it, you know, walking down there in the middle of it. And I remember going back later that year to a, a SARA meeting, which is a, basically an excuse for all the winemakers in, in one county to get together and, and drink wine. But talking and telling people and showing them pictures, it's like you could not tell you were not in a vineyard anywhere in California there. I mean, you're right in the middle of it. The thing that stood out was the soil and, and the, uh, the rock there. And I was just like, wow, this is great. Reflective heat underneath, good air circulation. So all the things that I, I loved. And then, um, then, of course, then I had to deal with Brenda's vineyard manager, um, Wayne, uh, <laughs> and his sense of humor, which was an addition. I was like, I've landed in the perfect place. But the, the Cabernet, um, the, the berry size in 2012 was a wonderful year. It was heart, that made it that much more heartbreaking. 13 was an orphan year because of the 
extreme loss. And it was just like, as a winemaker, you're like, oh, I just, just got started. Now I got to wait a whole nother year. I, mean, I am not a patient person. I, I'm a microwave minute. I think that minute takes forever. So you can imagine 18 months was <laughs> torture to get the fruit in again. So Doc, what do you, what do you think of the 2012, the, the wine? Yeah, so, so I want to tell you about uh, the first time I was in the the uh, the Canada Vineyard, uh, I was uh, walking and I was looking at the dirt. I was smiling, and, and uh, because it's so uh, such an you know it's such bad dirt and for everything. <laughs> <that's great. laughs> and Brenda said, "You don't have to say it. I know what you're thinking." So, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is it's magical uh, it is. <laughs> and they, they struggle and they um they produce those really small berries and I, as the crux to the issue here is not that the fruit isn't good it's the fact that the grower gets paid by weight and the winemaker loves to see smaller berries which weigh less so <laughs> <laughs> and it's it, um, so they're we're right off the bat we're kind of on opposite ends, but finding that 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 ground of that quality the the intensity of that fruit, if you uh, if John, you I'll tell you what it reminded me of John was we were a group of Texas uh, grape growers uh, in gosh uh, the early nineties went to Bordeaux and we were going through the uh, the, the Margot uh, pardon me the Mouton vineyard with the with the uh, winemaker. And it was uh, it was gumbo, clay, mud. You know, it was it was not the beautiful classic. Uh, you know, soil you think of for a vineyard. And that's the that, I had that thought when I was looking at the soil at, in the Canada Vineyard. This is exceptional, and it really it really has something that the grapes need. I mean, you're asking about the wine, and Joe and I, neither Joe yeah. and I are, are addressing <laughs> that question, but I will. Uh, you know, I thought this has of the three. This has more depth. It's more, it's more complex. Uh, uh, things are, are more in a kind of an intense balance. The fruit, the tannin, uh, the minerality. Um, I'm getting just a little bit of a uh, kind of a rich, I don't, I don't know if I would say maybe a darker coffee note on the, on the nose and on the finish to this wine. Well, I, I think so. I think it, I, it's much more mature. I mean, it has been in bottle for just a, a hair over six years. So, you yeah. know, we bottled this early 2014, so, um, or mid 2014. So it was just, just under two years in barrel. Um, and so it's just been about six years in bottle. Um, but the, okay, so the blend, we'll get to the blend on this one, which is, it, it is different than the 14 and the 15. Each of these three wines is almost a completely different blend. The root fact is that it's Canada fruit. Um, you know, the, the blend here is um, 90, 3% Cabernet, 4% Merlot, and 3% Cabernet Franc. It's the only one of the three that have Cabernet Franc in it. And that Cab Franc was from the Bingham Vineyards. Um, that, that's the only one of the three blends that were there currently on this lineup that has Cabernet Franc in it. But if you go to the 15, if you have the 15, and those of you at home who have all three, if you have the 15, you can them right away, because that's what I was doing. I was trying to pay attention, but I'm, I'm sorry, wine takes my attention away. And I must be a little bit ADD. So um, it's just basically, it's like squirrel. But if you take the 12 and the 15 on the nose, of the three, these two have the closest nose together to me. I agree. Yeah. And it's funny because there is no Cab Franc in the 15. Yeah. We get uh, a, we do have the Malbec um, from the vineyard in here, which is a nice deeper note. Um, and then the Cab Franc in the 12. So, you think of the three, so Joe, what do you think? So, so Doc, you think of the three, the 12 is the, is the richest. Um, exactly what I think, yeah. yeah. I, I love the richness. Yeah. It's gonna get better. Yeah. Um, well, I think the 15 is on 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 route. I, you know, it's, other, it's, only, it's only been a bottle a couple of years and I, I really think laying this down is gonna be great. The 14 to me is the lightest of the three. But the character, there's more tobacco in the 14. Um, and, there is, and the nose is much, much brighter on the 14. Mm -hmm. It's much more forward. Yeah, no, I think it has a little more acid left um, in, in the 14 than the other two as well. Uh, is, in four, was 14 the year that we had the um, kind of the earlier heat wave, like June? 
Yeah, it, right at the Fourth of July, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, pretty pretty good heat wave, and and that was the year that Brenda would say that uh, for about a week there during testing, she'd be able to stick her hand in the canopy. It was much cooler than the outside air. It was almost like hmm. you know, air conditioning. Yeah, that was in 2016. Oh, I'm sorry, 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, okay. That, okay. It was that way. Uh -huh. See, it, don't. It was... <laughs> I'm not messing with you, Brad, I promise. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> not like <that. laughs> uh, No, I mean... <laughs> Well, I can't believe earlier your son wasn't going to open the bottle. <laughs> like, that's the bomb, buddy. <laughs> hey. 2012 is one of my favorites. I love that stuff. Right. It is right. it is great. <laughs> so what do you well, what do you guys think of the 12? So Brenda, what what do you think when you taste the 12? I it was so smooth and it it it, it the taste is really good to me. I'd forgotten how it had tasted. And there is a difference a, a, a difference to me between the 12 and the 15. The color. I, I look at the color and, and the color seems to be darker in the 12 than it does in, in the 15 to me. Well, Daniel, what, what do you think? Oh, I, I'm, the 12 is, I think because we look back in our notes and we, we harvested 50 bins that yeah, year, that uh, 2012. And I think it was one of the first vintages we had that was a big production at the time for us off yes. that off the vineyard mm -hmm. and so i stocked up on a bunch of that of uh, the wine you know for christmas gifts and things i was and, wondering where all that disappeared from the warehouse yeah. <laughs> well there you go so but i mean i have enjoyed the 12 for a lot it's just one of my favorites and i can't it's so smooth is is what i really really enjoy about it it's just really smooth so can you can you guys get any remarkable things about 2012 that stick out in your mind uh, it, it was 2012 is kind of the light in between the two darkness darknesses of the of the 11 and 13 because we did make wine in 2011 but that year we only received that was the worst year farming wise we have ever uh, had to date we only had four inches of rain the whole year that's right in 2011. 2011 and then we went to 2013 where we didn't get to harvest any grapes that year right. because of the freeze and so it's just i mean it's that's what i, I remember 2012 was kind of a a lot between you know because 2011 that was a that's the year i found out i didn't know as much about farming as i thought i did <laughs> <laughs> You know, welcome to life, huh? <laughs> I think the best the best thing I ever saw, Daniel, was this thing. It said, just when I figured out all the answers to all the questions, somebody went, went and changed the questions. <laughs> <laughs> just give the same answer, John. It will give you a, right? wear, wear that shirt and give the same answer. It'll be I'll, I'll remember that <laughs> in our meeting tomorrow. Just pick some Yes, yeah, except pick C all the time, smoking like a teacher. Just go ahead, C all the time. <laughs> oh, that, that's you know, awesome. John, John, this is wonderfully mature. It's, yeah, I, I get a little bit of, even a little bit of eucalyptus, um, kind of, kind of on the front palate. Um, it, it's, it's amazing how this is, this is aged. It, it really has. And, you know, so, you know, Daniel, you were, you were referencing back earlier how you, your competitive spirit comes out and you, you want to, you want to show the rest of the world that we're the best here. And, and that is a great uh, position to have, but you, you, you don't have to say a word when the fruit is this good and the wine is matured this well, you just have to pop open the bottle and let somebody taste it. And, and I think that's, that's when you and I have done our jobs correctly at that point um, when the, when the wine can speak for itself. You asked earlier, Doc, what I or, or Joe, what I thought of, you know, the differences, or you know, was I prepared for this? And you're never truly prepared to go to a new vineyard, regardless of where it is. You always worry. You always have butterflies in your stomach. It's like, am I going to mess this up? And that's every year, no matter what, every harvest. It's like, okay, one one minute of of irrational behavior, and and psh, there it goes. There's a problem. But 
when you can go back and taste this, and this is where I really, really enjoy my job because I get to see what happened eight years ago. I, I did okay. It's now, it, this is the proof, so to speak, in the bottle. So yeah, I think we did, uh, we did a wonderful job with this. And I think it's, Daniel, this is going to this is going to compete very well. And we actually started talking about trying to release some of our library wines back to competition just to see how they fare several years later in, in retrospect. And I think this is one that would certainly um, be marketed for this fall's um, international competitions without a problem. You know, that this is just doing so well. So, okay, guys, um, got to ask, you're going to have to start thinking about this. I'm, I'm going to look for a few questions and try to hold this off, but you're going to have to start thinking about a good food pairing because it is also food Friday in addition to having all three wines. But in, um, so do you, so Brenda, do you guys have just the 15 and the 12 or do you also have the 14? We have just the, the 12 and the 15. Okay. Okay. So, well, fair comparison then. What do you think of the 15? How did that hold up for you? you taste it, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's smooth going down. Mm -hmm. Anything remarkable? I like the 12 better. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think you and Doc are in the same boat on that one. <laughs> Daniel, what do you think? Uh, I like it. Um, honestly, it's like you're, you're asking me to choose between my children. And I'm not very... <laughs> I, I know how much work went into each of these. So it all... They're all excellent in their own, you know, their own way. Probably, well, I, I like, I, t I, I seem to be uh, leaning toward wine that has aged a little longer, to be honest. So I'm interested to see what the 15 tastes like in a couple of years. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, I, back to asking to choose between your children, which is always a tough decision, but I'm going to give you what Brett always likes to say. It depends on, on which one's behaving well that day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I um, I think the the fifteen, Joe. What's your impression of the fifteen? I was just I was just thinking the fit the fifteen is interesting. You know, for for being, um, you know, for being a, for being a, a slightly younger wine, it's it's very complex. It's got a, just a, um, it's it's very it is very similar to the twelve. You know, it has kind of an interesting front palate. Um, that hits the tip of your tongue and it's it's got a um it's it's interesting that it's got it's starting to get the um um some of the older bordeaux notes um that that the 12 has uh it's it's, it's an interesting wine i i think i tend towards a, a really mature wine anyway i i i love young wines but i'll tell you what about 10 years 10 to 12 years and it's just like, mm, that's starting to hit the spot where I'm really enjoying the wine, the, the more mature that they are. I like the, the way the fruit kind of evolves out a little bit and you get much more of those more complex, richer notes out of there. Um, and that's what I love about Cabernet overall, seems to age. I would add that I, I think the 14 uh, doesn't give, give up much in this lineup. Uh, mm -hmm. It has different character, different, different uh, acidity, but uh, boy, it's great. Um, I think um, slightly, di slightly different blend, probably, but uh, it is. And I, I, unfortunately, I was trying to look through the cheat sheets that I have down here. I thought I saved them all from the previous tasting to see um, to go back through and see if I had the 14 on here. Um, but I, I'm not finding the blend comp on the 14 right away. So I'll have to. You'll have to reference back to the Wednesday. The, the Wednesday um, little virtual tasting. Okay, so I want to get, okay, so I hate that. <laughs> All right, so now we need to move on to the food pairing portion of this. So um, Doc, what do you think? What would you pair? I'm ready. Well, you know, uh, I, would, I want to, Brendan Brown, I, I grew up in Abilene. You know, I grew up in West Texas. And uh, I ate a lot of cornbread and black eyed peas. And I have to tell you, that I, that's, that's what I want to match with this wine. And, and that's totally out of right field. Uh, cornbread and black eyed peas. A little cornbread. Black eyed peas and cornbread. I promise you this would be wonderful. And, okay, and but we're going to peace out in about an hour. Do you smoke ham in those black eyed peas or not? Pardon? 
do you use ham hock in the black eyed peas? A little piece, yeah, small piece, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, Brenda, have you had black eyed peas and cornbread? Yes, <laughs> yes, I, I love it. Really, Brenda, have you breathed there? <laughs> <laughs> We had, in Adelaide growing up, we had a lot of black eyed peas and cornbread, I can tell you, most every night. And, uh, Always black eyed peas and cornbread and okra and squash. Oh my God. And yeah. that was my favorite meal. My and, mouth is watering. And, that, uh, yeah, now you're making me hungry too. <laughs> Where do I sign up? Okay, Joe, what, what would you pair with the 2012 specifically? You know, uh, our chef at the winery, Michael, has done some um, incredible smoked um, pork tenderloin. You know, with, with the right sauce that I that I think would be would be very good with this. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Canada's, you guys are up. We're gonna go with you first, Daniel. <laughs> Well, Christy last night, she fixed us a chocolate cake, and I always like the wine with the chocolate cake. Oh, hey, wait yeah. a minute. I didn't know chocolate cake could be involved here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have some here. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Okay, besides chocolate cake. <laughs> so, Daniel, what do you think? I, I like it. I would like it with a New York strip. Um, okay. I mean, I know that's easy, but I, it would it, it would go wonderfully with a New York strip for me. I agree. I agree. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, absolutely it would. So, Brenda, besides chocolate cake, what would you pick? I, well, I like it with, with a steak, a, a ribeye, or with the ribs. Either one is good to me. What about, um, so what about seafood? Do you think it would go with anything? Well, the wine doesn't eat seafood. <laughs> the vineyard manager doesn't eat as much. <laughs> okay, then he doesn't have to pick. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, the problem. <laughs> so, so we should send him a case of Maine lobsters when they're in season. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we will enjoy them. <laughs> right. I actually, I thought grilled tuna might go well with this. A really uh, heavy meteor fish grilled, I think might go I'll very well. Uh, and swordfish, John. Ooh. Swordfish. No swordfish, good. Dr. Becker. No. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's not in the sustainable category for seafood. <laughs> Look, I'm, you're going to bring out the hippie in me. I just. <laughs> <laughs> it is tasty but we don't like to eat predators, okay? <laughs> uh, no, I think swordfish would go very well with it, actually. Um, but no shark, okay? No shark, I'm drawing the line. <laughs> oh, no, I won't, I promise. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, listen, I got a couple of questions here. Uh, one of them, uh, Brenda, of the, last, uh, of, of the last vintages since you've been growing, which two are your favorite vintages? Of uh, the, the three that we have here? No, no, of, since you've been a grower, since about 2007 forward or 2005 forward, what, what have you been favorite? Well, one of my favorite has always been the nine. Nine? Okay. Uh -huh. And why? Why? Yeah. Well, I, I just like the way it tasted. Okay, fair point. Yeah, and, I just like the way it tasted. Uh, Brenda, I, I think it was. I would say that was probably winemaking too. I mean, I don't know how to say that, but. Um... Hey, I got something in my pocket for you. <laughs> oh, that was not, and then 10 was another one. And then nine and 10, I like. Again, again, again Brenda. Uh... Hey, I think somebody is getting ready to do the podcast. Yeah, the second two was really good. Okay. No, the no, it's funny you should say the nine because I actually I've had the ten. The ten is very very tasty. I like the nine, but um, I, of those two, I actually prefer the ten. So, but I, that they're both excellent. Um, so, Daniel, do you have any favorite vintages? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say the twelve is actually one of them. Uh, the seven because it was the first, of yeah, course. Yes, yes, um, yes. Yep. Because that kind of started it all. Me and mom drugged the vineyard manager in, you know, <laughs> into the pond. So, uh, yep. 
And then also, I mean, I have a, I think a, a 17 is going to be pretty good too, I think, uh, because I, I, Boy, I, agree with you. I do my yeah. tasting because of the grapes. When we're harvesting, that's where I get a lot of, and I love the 16 and I love, I love the 17 grapes out of the bin. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. Really I, uh, um, I actually, the nine was very good. And the, and the, the 10 that they're coming into their own as far as maturation in the cellar. But if, um, unfortunately, I think we're out of all of them. <clears throat> no. <laughs> but so, so doc, Joe, of all of the vintages that you've dealt with, with the, um, the Canada's excluding anything before 2012, what is, no, I'm kidding. But, um, <laughs> So what vintages stand out in your mind? 17 for sure. Yeah. Uh, 12, 10, uh, 7. Mm -hmm. I love the 7. I think the, I think the 15 is going to be a star. I think 15 is going to be a star. Yeah. You know, I don't think I've had the 7. I, I think we've, we've got to prevent Rachel from going down into the cellar with the corkscrew <laughs> until we have some more. <laughs> so. Okay, guys. Um, I guess we've, we've all done the food and everything and we're not seeing too many questions. I think people are starting to gear up for their Friday evenings, but Brenda, as always, and Daniel, thank you for taking time out. Uh, I know you guys are busy and we really, really do appreciate you joining us here. It's always something to, ha to have you guys on. And please tell um, the vineyard manager that he's the only rancher and farmer that I know that likes to relax by having a garden. So <laughs> it cracks me up. <laughs> if you work outside all day and this is how I'm going to relax. I'm going to go home and plant a garden. <laughs> 20,000 acres of row crop. I mean, uh, and this guy's been in cattle aren't enough. <laughs> we, we enjoy it. We enjoy growing the grapes for Beckers and it's, it's a family thing. And we're glad to be a part of that family. Well, we, we, I, I am certainly glad to be a part of it too. too. I, I couldn't be happier to, to work there. So, so Doc, Joe, any final words of wisdom? No, I, um, just that um, uh, I got a, I got a, uh, an email from somebody that I had trained with this week. That's um, that had uh, he, he was a. Uh, somebody that trained with me at Yale, and he'd been um, he'd volunteered at a at a hospital in in New York. Uh, uh, you know, when they were in the middle of their uh, uh, health crisis, and uh, it was it was very telling. It was very sobering, and um, just appreciate everything that all all of all of the healthcare professionals are doing: nurses, doctors, first responders, everything, everybody. Yeah. People cleaning the rooms, right? You know, the, the hardest yeah. job. So wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're all they're all facing. It. I mean, they they're they're on the front front there and taking a risk every day to help us all out. So, absolutely. And uh, words of wisdom, since I have lots of nurses in my family, be kind to your nurse. And uh, um, I, you know, <laughs> I I am. <laughs> they can make or break your life. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everyone at home, we, uh, we hope you've enjoyed this week. We certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. Remember, um, enjoy your wine first and foremost with whatever you would like. Uh, and the second thing is to the best glass of wine ever is a bottle that is shared with somebody you love. So there's my word of wisdom for Friday. So good health to everyone. Cheers and great wine. Thank you.